In this tutorial, I'll discuss the use of R for linear regression. When you recall some of the equations and the formulas involved in linear regression, you'll really appreciate using the software, any software in fact, as opposed to trying to do these calculations by hand. Here is the equation for the Pearson's linear coefficient. Um, and if you had a large data set, there'd be no way you could do this without making some errors. So uh, what I'm going to do is go through the commands. There really are very few. And if you look at the last part on the written tutorial, I gave a bare bones list of the commands without any comments, or with just a few comments for using uh, for linear regression. The first two steps in linear regression is first to look at the scatter plot of the data and then compute the correlation coefficient. You need to do both. You can have a very nice correlation coefficient and then look at the data and you can say there's no way this is linear. So you need two pieces of it. So after you've made the scatter plot, which I'll do in a minute, then you're going to compute the correlation coefficient. And in R, the command for that is COR. Okay. COR, and after that you give the X values, the Y value, just like you do with plot. Now, in real data, um, sometimes there's data values that are missing. If you give people questionnaires, they don't fill in every answer, for example, and so they'll have NAs listed where you really would like to see or thought you would like to see some data. When you compute this correlation coefficient, you have to tell R what to do with missing data. If there's no missing data values, that's it, you're done. If there are missing data values, you use this line right here, which doesn't seem to have a lot of meaning, but this is what it is. Use equals, in quotes, NA dot or complete. End quote. Just like that. So, if there are missing data values and there's NA in the list of a bunch of numbers and you don't tell it about it, the correlation coefficient won't work. It'll come back and say, I think it says none or NA or something when it's done also. So, here I am in R and I'm going to attached data set that has lots of different columns and that's that Motor Trends car data so I like using that one and I'm going to look at um, first let's make a scatter plot of miles per gallon versus weight so I'm going to put the weight and miles per gallon I'm assuming that if it's um, let's take a look at it Okay, so the miles per gallon goes down as the weight goes up, and this looks fairly linear. So I don't see any, let me put this more in the viewing area. So it looks like it's a fairly good candidate for linear regression. I'm going to go back here now, and I'll verify that, or I'll get the other parameter. And that's the COR, the correlation. And again, I'm going to say weight, miles per gallon, and let's see what I get minus 0.867. Okay, I expected, it did look like it was going down, so I expected that correlation would be closer to minus 1, and it seems to be. I want to give another example of, uh, of a plot and of, of two variables that really aren't that well linearly correlated, and that's going to be weight and horsepower. So I'm going to look at, um, put the weight here and then the horsepower. Whoops, I want to plot them first. So go plot weight versus horsepower, and this is what I get. Okay, so you can kind of see an increasing trend, but there are all these other values up here that, um, I don't know if you can see the cursor or not, but you can see the other values up on the top that don't really fall into the linear pattern. These are the sports cars. The Maserati is probably the highest dot. The Camaro's in here somewhere. I think there's a couple other cars in there that, uh, so basically the sports cars kind of throw this off. They're lightweight and have bigger engines. So, okay, this isn't a good candidate as it stands, although you could remove those outliers and see what you get after that. But let's go and compute instead the correlation coefficient for this data set and see what we get. Um, okay, and it's, it's closer to, it's about 0.66. Mm, 
you see that its sign is positive as expected because it was there was sort of an upward trend um, but it's not that very good so having found a data set um, well two variables out of a data set that appear to be linearly correlated by scatter plot and by correlation coefficient we'll now move to creating the least squares fit and that's done with the R command LM now there's something about this command that's weird every everything else for example when we did plot or is it plot we put the X first we looked at the correlation coefficient we put the X first when we do this least square squares fit we put the Y first now you'll remember to do it when you do the least squares fit but after that you'll be mixed up and then you go and plot Y versus X so I just need to point that out the second thing I need to remind you of is that if you don't give it a whoops if you don't give it a name you just do the least squares fit it will give you a couple variables it will give you the coefficients the beta 0 and the beta 1 but then everything's lost after that so you need to give it a name I called it the line you could call it the fit you call it least squares but give it a name so we're in R again and we found that weight versus miles per gallon was fairly linear so we're going to fit, here's my the line, I'll call it the line. I'm using the command LM. And now I have to put the Y variable first. And the Y variable is going to be uh, miles per gallon, then the tilde, then the X value, which is weight. And there's no missing data, we don't have any problem, we can just go ahead with this. And now, where are the answers? Well, if you go the line, you find that the coefficients are stored right there. The intercept is the beta zero. Let's recall here a minute what the line looks like in statistics. If you draw a line in algebra, you go y equals mx plus b. In statistics, you say beta naught, so beta naught is the b plus beta 1 x. All right. This beta naught is the y-intercept and that's written right here. The slope, you would think they would write slope up here, but they don't. Instead they write the variable that is the x variable. They write its name. The reason for that is that there's something called multiple linear regression instead of simple linear regression. And the multiple linear regression, the y is, um, you have several independent variables and that's not done in this course. But that's why they call it weight, because they're reminding you of the variable that the slope uh, would multiply. Now those coefficients um, are stored in the line, so if you really wanted them out, oops, I'm not So if you wanted the coefficients, you wanted the beta zero. I like that sometimes. Coefficients of the line. And now we've seen this before. If you want the value of it, put double um, brackets around it. And there, there's your beta zero, beta one. Well, actually it's better to use the line because coefficients is hard to spell without making a mistake. Okay, so you can type out beta zero, which is the 37 we got before. And that was the y-intercept, which doesn't make any sense. And you can, um, in the coursework, you study about linear regression. The y-intercept might not make any sense at all because you're not going to extrapolate down to zero. Okay. And now the beta one, which is your slope, it's negative as expected. There's a lot more information stored in the line and you don't get it out just by typing the line. You have to type summary. This will not give you the five number summary. Actually, it actually gives one five number summary for the residuals, but it's a summary of the linear regression. 
And the next thing we're going to look at after we do the linear regression is the coefficient of determination, which would be your r squared, and you'll get it from this printout. So you type summary and the name that you gave your linear regression. Now you see that's why I want to give it a name. And here's what you get. Okay, so you get the five number summary for the residuals, which may or may not be useful. But for this class, these are the things you're going to look at. Here is that intercept, the 37 again. Here is the minus 5, all right, for the slope. Okay. Now here is your, here's the r squared right here. Of course, we computed the correla correlation coefficient r, and so we could have squared it to get this value, but it's, it's just sitting right here. Okay. And of course, you can see that more parameters are computed than we talk about. Linear regression is a big subject and could, um, in fact, some places, um, it's a course on its, to itself. The next thing we're going to want to look at are the residuals. We want to see that those residuals are randomly distributed so that we can uh, feel pretty good about using this line to either um, estimate or predict values for y and the residuals are stored in the line. You don't have to go get them anywhere or compute them separately. And we'll give them a name here. Let me get focus back to the screen. Okay, I'll call them residuals. Oh yes, for residual. And you just type residuals out of the line. Okay, you want to see what they look like? There they are. All right. We generally want to plot these and see how they look. We want to see that scattered look to them, so let's go ahead and plot them. Um, versus the x value, you can plot them different ways. So here's what they look like versus the x value. They look pretty scattered. Some are positive and some are negative. And so it's just for a point of reference, we could put on the a line with zero slope and zero y-intercept just for reference. So here's that horizontal line. You see some of the residuals are above, some are below, and we've expected by the on the assumption of the linear regression and least squares fit that the sum of the residuals would be zero. That means there's as much as are above the line of this line zero. Um, the same amount would be if you added up all these values down here um, below the line would balance off the ones above the line to get a, a total sum of zero. So the residuals look pretty good, and now let's go see about the line. I would like to see um, the least squares line sitting right on top of the data. So first I'll plot the data off, which was um, weight versus miles per gallon. And I can give it some labels, and I'm not going to do that for this, for this plot right here. I'll just take the defaults. So first I plot it, and I get the scatter plot. Here's the scatter plot of the data that we did initially anyway. And now I'm going to add to it a line. And it's pretty easy here. All you have to do is AB line and give it the line because within line is stored both the intercept and the slope. Well, we'll kind of make it stand out a little bit. OK. So there you go. There's your least squares line sitting on top of all that data. And that's basically it for, uh, for what we're going to do for linear regression for this class.